disappointed in the way we uh, coached and, and played today. But give credit to uh, to Army, Coach Monk and his players were well prepared and uh, and outplayed us, outcoached us. This home? Oh, there we go. Uh, Coach, uh, third quarter down, uh, I believe it was a 49-7 on Army's 30, the choice to punt. Uh, what was the reasoning uh, for going with that punt instead of trying to go? Forward? Fourth and 20, I believe it was. I believe it was maybe even a little bit more. So, Coach, with Ed Oliver sitting out of the bowl game, how hard was it making defensive adjustments for your defensive line to try and stop the run? Yeah, I, th I think it, you know, I love Ed to death, but there was more issues than just than missing Ed. It was, uh, you know, they did give credit to Army, you know. I don't want to sit here and talk about, you know, injuries and things like that. Give credit to people who executed, prepared their team well, and, uh, and won the football game. What, what did you think about the game that Hopkins had, and how, how was he able to uh, run that offense? He just executed flawlessly. I mean, he, he I don't think they had uh, maybe one time they had a ball exchange issues, and I'm not, I'm not sure if that was him or four that was in there at that time. Um, but just executed really well, kept a good rhythm, uh, was was good with ball security and, and all of his mechanics and exchanges. Uh, and then when he was asked to throw, I mean, he put it where it needed to be. Coach, I know there's going to be a lot of focus on the negatives of what went wrong today, but what could you take away positively that you talked with your team afterwards with? Um, you know, just just talking to those guys, I just told them three things in the locker room. Thank you. You know, even though it's a disappointing and loss, thank you. Uh, number two, take care of yourself over the break. You know, this is a time period where everybody's on winter break and it's college kids and just make sure you understand that you got to represent Houston, but also the name on the back of your jersey lasts a lot longer. So make sure you take care of yourself over the break, do the right thing, and then come back in shape. You know, we're going to come back in January and we're going to set the ball down again and go through off season and come back in shape and those three things. Coach, uh, Ken Kratz, American Legion Radio. Uh, why was uh, Army's aggressive uh, defense, they were, they were getting penetration, Jim Nautical had a couple of plays, Ken Brinson had a couple of plays from outside linebacker. Why was it tough to stop the, their linebacker uh, penetrating and blitzing? Well, uh, you know, there's a number of things, but give credit to them for, for being aggressive like that. Uh, you know, young quarterback, tempo offense, you know, you're, you're, you're playing on momentum as a tempo offense. And so when you create pressure, whether it's from safety blitzes or corner blitzes, um, you know, those are things that can create negative yardage plays or, or second and ten again. And I thought they did an outstanding job of calling the game defensively and, and keeping us off balance. Major, uh, you never used injuries this season as no. an excuse. Um, but when it came down to it and just the things that happened with this defense this year, what, can you put your finger on where, where, where it went wrong or where it fell apart? Yeah, I mean, I, I look back at, uh, you know, the Texas Tech game, you know, when everybody was there, when everybody was available and everybody was healthy. And, um, you know, and we, we go out to Lubbock and, and take a, you know, a hard loss, uh, but, but give up a lot defensively. At that point in time, it hits your psyche. And you can go back and you can play some other teams uh, and have some relative success, but you, you know that's still lurking in the back of your mind. Um, and then you couple that kind of a little bit of doubt um, in yourself as a, as a you know, got to be able to execute the confidence you need to have as a competitor. You have that little bit of doubt in the back of your mind, and then that kind of gets uh, compounded with injuries. Yeah, that's the, that's the hardest part to swallow. You know, I mean, you're you're seven and one. Um, you just beat a ranked team at home by 21 points, and you're getting ready to, you know, move on for uh, competing for conference play. And then, you know, you just go through a slew of injuries, and that's difficult. But we were still able to to win a game in that stretch to to take it all the way down to the last game to possibly make the conference championship game. And then you you're tied up to start the fourth quarter there in Memphis. Um, you know, again, I'm I'm proud of the way our guys fought. I'm not I'm not proud of losing the games at the end of the season the way we lost them. Um, but I'm proud of the guys that were thrown in there that weren't quite ready or hadn't had a spring practice in a fall camp to develop. I'm proud of the way they fought their tails off. And, um, you know, and that's what we've got to draw on when we come back in January, is some of those guys did get some live experience. They do have a benchmark, a measurement of where they need to improve during the offseason. They're not standing over there holding their helmet as a red shirt, wondering what it's like to be in a game. They've been in a game. Uh, so they'll attack the weight room and offseason differently uh, with that experience on the field. Typical offseason in terms of 
got some stuff that are front and center, uh, hiring a defensive coordinator, right. um, possible other things, recruiting. Uh, but for you personally, how do you take going into for your, your year three and, and where it starts for you and how to you know maybe get over that hump? Right. No, I think you're you're exactly right. It's just you know what what are those things uh, after the 18 season? You you know you obviously have to have depth because we had to dig into it. Um, but all that stuff really starts in terms of the type of staff you assemble, the type of players you bring in, and recruiting. So recruiting coaches and recruiting players is is my first priority when I leave here. Um, this press conference is, is finding the right coaches and the right players to join our football team, and then obviously you have this time period where the players are away, and you have time to look at off season. Uh, look at the things that you need to stress as a football team uh, to get better and to win those games. I mean, you know, if, if we're all healthy, do you still win them all? You know, you still got to evaluate it from that standpoint. As if everybody was out there, was that a guarantee that we we're going to win all the games or were the things that we needed to fix in there regardless? When you do look at, at what you uh, purchased on defensive coordinator, obviously when you got here and you assembled your staff, that was the, the kind of the first big move that you had made as a head coach. Do you look at now hiring a, a defense supporter? Is, is this, I don't know uh, how to put it, in terms of how important it is to get that right guy you know, coming off of a season that many, many people, including your fan base, you know, weren't real happy with yeah. things turn out defensively? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's, it's about finding the right personality, Joe. Um, you know, there's a lot of, and I'm not trying to sound flippant about it, but there's a lot of people that can coach cover three and quarters and cover two. and you know, bring two, four off a side. I mean, there's a lot of people that can do that, but it's the, it's the guys that can create relationships and inspire young men and keep them motivated on a daily basis. Um, that's, that's really what more or less I'm looking at. You know, not, not is he a three-man front or a four-man front? Does he play man or his own? Uh, but can he get between the, you know, between the ears with every single player on the defense side of the ball and, and, and find the best in them and, and coach the best out of them? Time for one or two more here. Yes, sir. He's uh he's it, it doesn't take long uh, to, <laughs> to get to Ed if, if he's not the most talented player uh, that I've ever been around as a coach, uh, but his impact on our university you know we we said it before it gives testimony to guys that are five star athletes and you know all those things that recruiting services give that you can come here make all American win national awards uh, you know and still get drafted in the first round, and so his impact on our university is huge and he's been great to be around. He's got a great personality. Uh, I know y'all don't see that on a daily basis, but I see it, or I've seen it every day for the last three years. And um, you know, he's going to have a lot of success, a lot of success, because he's one who likes challenges. And um, I'm not going to say he was bored or this game was too easy for him, um, but I think he's a guy who will embrace the challenges of the NFL and do damn well at it. Um, yeah, I think it's it's a combination, you know, a combination of some of the personnel issues, but but I'm I'm not going to take credit away from guys who, you know, work their ass off, prepare hard, and, and and do a great job and won 11 games. You know, that wasn't luck. I mean, those are good football players with good coaches, and they prepared hard to win the game. Um, but some of the lack of experience at key positions, uh, or injuries, or guys who missed part of the season contributes to that as well. Is that good? Right. Thank you all. Thank appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, David Bassett, he's here. Uh, if you want to grab players, he will.